Today's video is sponsored by Sheet Music Plus, a great website with sheet music from any genre you could possibly want. Click the link down in the description below and enter in the word love at checkout and you get $15 off your order. How about that? In the meantime, stick around. We got a great video coming for you. Uh, that song, like the tone of it, probably mm -hmm. definitely came from Let Me Get the Hell Out of Here. And then uh, I realized after the fact, like, oh, this song is about addiction, you know, which is something I've been through. So I was like, oh, that makes sense. It's like the same feeling I'm having. Like, I want to get the hell out of here. This sucks. Like, this is right. purgatory. <laughs> If you're enjoying the content Room 6 is putting up, please make sure you subscribe down there and hit the bell so you don't miss an episode. While you're at it, feel free to like and share, and uh, yeah, let's go. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today I'm welcoming back a previous interviewee to Room 6. Uh, he's here today to promote his four-song EP, The Loneliest Epidemic. Uh, recorded pretty much all in quarantine, so it ought to be uh, very interesting. I'm looking forward to reviewing it in another video. For right now, please welcome to the show, Brennan K. Jones. What up, Brennan? Hey, how's everyone doing? Hey, hey. Cheers. Cheers. Clink. <laughs> mm. I love scotch. Scotchy, scotch, scotch. <laughs> so, first of all, how, how are, how's quarantine treating you? You're being productive. Uh, yeah, I'm being productive and, um, you know, fortunately slash unfortunately, I haven't been completely quarantined, you know, at the, even at the beginning of the madness because my day job is the grocery store. So yep. <clears throat> I was pretty much on the, you know, the front lines dealing with the public, but um, it's been good. Other than that, I, I use all my time at, at home to make stuff and be productive and that's why I figured it'd be a good idea to finally record more of the songs I have because I have so many of them you know it would be nice to actually get them out there on the, all the streaming platforms since I can't play live right now right and uh, <clears throat> trust me uh, we're all feeling that that Jones to get out there yes uh, no pun intended on your last name there. <laughs> so, um, first of all thank you for being an essential worker not like you had a choice I also no. essential so I get to go in every day and for, uh, fortunately for me, I don't deal with the general public. I deal with the same 10 people all day, every day. And uh, so it's kind of like we all get, you know, our temperature taken when we start work. So we all know, like, okay, just keep your mask on. And uh, we all, you know, we're all under 100.3 degree Fahrenheit temperature and all that. Um, <clears throat> now, I know that you did all the instrumentation on this, okay, mm -hmm. with the exception of uh, you had Chad Martinez do your engineering, but he also did some drum tracks on, or dr some drum programming on track four, right? Yeah, all the drums on track four. <clears throat> it's all, uh, yeah, he just sequenced all that. Because I had had like a rough uh, demo from the last EP I did, um, from a song that didn't get used, the EP, the previous EP you had reviewed. But I have a song that uh, I'd recorded at Naked City Audio, and uh, instead of using metronomes, clicks, we would just program little drum beats, because I just, the click fucks me up. I hate it. Right, it's, right. it's still to this day, you know, I feel like I'm concentrating so hard when I'm playing onto a click. But uh, it was kind of like this like trap beat thing. And I always thought, oh, I want that in there. I actually want it to sound like that. I want it to sound very, you know, I want it to be an obviously programmed beat. I just thought it went well with the song. So I played that for Chad and uh, he used that and then programmed the, the beat, which you hear. And then we turned it into this whole little dream poppy type song. Cool. Um, and then you also got Ryan Ray on to come in for the uh, the final mixing or, or the what did he do exactly yeah he mixed it and he mastered it mastering so, that's the yeah word. yeah so he <laughs> gave it you know <laughs> so even though this is uh at home which i'm used to you know it's definitely it's still not the lo-fi thing i had someone who's a professional luckily a friend of mine who's a professional uh master the whole thing yeah you know sounds like it was in a studio <laughs> now i have heard um a little bit of the uh the new stuff uh, thanks for giving me the sneak preview on that. 
I would not call it your usual lo-fi sad core. No. <laughs> Seems a little bit more um, introspective and, of course, given how it was written in, in this quarantine and pandemic, there's something there like, I, I'm i writing this from a place of, I want to get the hell out of here. Uh, that's, that's a fair assessment. It's funny because all those songs, except three, uh, three of those songs were songs I'd already had written and I played them live all the time. Oh, okay. Uh, one song was the only one I'd written in, in quarantine, the song uh, Backwash of Blood. Mm. And that's, that's the one I listened to the most because it was the first one in, in the group. Oh, in the file, yeah. Yeah, and so um, that's kind of what I was basing that statement off of, so I, I misspoke. Sorry. No, no. It's actually, since you went off that track initially, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and it's funny, too, because when I write, you know, and I'm, I'm, maybe you'll agree with this, I think a lot of people who write songs or write lyrics do, like, you don't sit down and think, like, okay, I'm going to write a song about this now. <laughs> you know, like, you know, here is my subject. This is what I'll do. Right. You know, I'm just pulling stuff out of my notebook. I'm right, you know, playing guitar, just singing stuff that comes to me. That is the hard. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I, so I think definitely uh, that song, like the tone of it probably Mm -hmm. definitely came from, let me get the hell out of here. And then uh, I realized after the fact, like, Oh, this song is about addiction, you know, which is something I've been through. So I was like, oh, that makes sense. It's like the same feeling. I'm having like, I want to get the hell out of here. This sucks. Like, this is right. purgatory. <laughs> and unfortunately, even when you do get to get out, you have to come back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the thing is there's no other home waiting. You know, you still got to come home. Yeah. You know? All right. Um, well, cool. So this time around, I'm, I'm going to skip the usual questions that I asked you last time because right. not much has changed, I'm sure. But I do want to ask, what was the last show you played before quarantine hit? Uh, that's actually hard to remember. Um, I saw I something it, on a Friday the 13th in March. Uh, I didn't get to play that show. So I oh. think the last, the last show I played was at the very end of last year. Uh, I played a show with my friend, uh, Wyatt McKenzie. Uh-huh. Who, who, he's been on the show, yep. He's been on the show, yeah. So everyone knows him, his mother, McKenzie. Uh, I played a show with him in the arts factory at a space over there. Uh, I think I I remember, I I remember hearing something about that show. Yeah. Yeah. And that was really fun. I think it was last show. And um, so I had a, like, I just kind of a lot of stuff going on with work and whatnot. And then uh, I was so excited that Friday the 13th, I was going to play a a show that night. And then the bunkhouse had something I jumped onto for the next night. And uh, then, right. That was the weekend. (laughs) The bunkhouse was one of the first bars that were like, Oh, we're just going to shut down. Yeah, I, re- I really I respected that. They're just saying we're gonna play it safe. We're gonna shut down, and everyone was kind of doing that. And then f- I think like right in middle of the weekend or right after, like you know that was when the government was like, oh no, everything shut down. So I right. was like, oh, man, I was gonna like play my first two shows <laughs> of the year. Yeah, I, I was there. Um, I think the weekend before you were going to play, uh, I was mm-hmm. there um, doing an interview and a review of uh, Void Vader. That was the last live event i went to until um i went to the sand dollar when they opened up just okay. recently um and and it was that was all i needed to be like oh my gosh people are being idiots about this we're not going to be opening up and back to normal for a long time because i went to sand dollar except for the staff i think i was the only other person wearing a mask and the place was packed there was no social oh. distancing going on yeah I mean, Sand Dollar had tables, you know, you know how it is. It's set up yeah. tables in front of stage. They, they took out like half the tables so that you had to social distance if you were sitting at a table. But meanwhile, if you're not right in front of the stage, it was just wall-to-wall people by the time it was really swinging. And um, I even noticed like the, some of the band members had um, masks on when, before they started playing, but once they started playing, they took them off. And I'm just like, yeah. you guys are not getting this. Right. You're not getting the point. So I kept my mask on except when, you know, I was eating and drinking. And I, I got lots I got looks. I got lots of looks and I didn't care. Have of course, you I, I, what? Oh I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, was gonna say, I also had my um where is it? I had my 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 hat on with the rainbow band brim. <laughs> oh. and, it, and it was it was like, you know, smack in, in the middle of Pride Month. So that right. might have had something to do with it, but it was like I don't care. But yeah, I um that going to Sandar and when I was at Bunkhouse, of course, it was packed. 
Roy Vader put on an amazing show, and, and um, I had a good time. But there was this feeling. You were starting to hear things, and there was, I had, this, I had that th this thought of, I think when I get home, I'm going to take a shower, and I'm going to, like, I don't think I'm doing this for a while until we find out what's going on with this uh, COVID stuff. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it turned out to be a good call on my part, but I'm amazed that I didn't get it from being there that night. You know, just yeah. what do you do when you see people? You hug them, you, you high five, you whatever, and you're standing, you're standing next to each other. Nobody's caring because we don't know. So, mm. all right. Well, moving back on to music stuff. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, getting back to my it. job. Um, what is diff? What would you say if you had to give the elevator pitch? What would you say is different about this one, this EP, as opposed to the last one? Uh, drums. <laughs> Dr <laughs> my 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 confidence and ability in playing drums. Oh, and I acquired a drum set, so there's real drums on. The there you track. go. <laughs> um. Uh, I think. Um, uh, oh, where do I want to go with that? Because I'm really proud of the last one. The last one was like a huge leap forward for me with the whole, you know, professional production and right. singing. And I think just in that sense, um, even though it was recorded at home, I've been learning so much uh about trying to make things sound as professional as possible whereas i used to like you know i just like the lo-fi charm where i didn't really care i didn't give a shit if people knew it was recorded at home because right. so much of my favorite stuff is like that <clears throat> excuse me but uh just just uh on that end of me learning that stuff and i think my singing has got a lot better here <coughs> sorry ah allergies i swear <laughs> oh Allergies right, and right choking on the this yeah <laughs> the scotch wow <clears throat> no I was sitting here going like oh I don't want to I can't hold it in I can't hold it in <laughs> sorry continue drums so <laughs> drums and singing singing because that's always a thing I, I I'll admit that I've had like some insecurity and in it. it took me a long time to even be able to get up in front of people you know be like all right I gotta that was something I had to overcome to, when I was like I gotta do this I like writing songs I need to share my songs with people I, I know I'm not the most technically gifted singer. I just got to figure out a style. So I think I've been getting uh, better at that. I'm really proud of the vocals on the EP. Yeah, from what I've, from what I've heard so far, um, it's, it seems like you put a lot of thought into them. You put a lot of um, care into the crafting of, of, of the phrases and, and just the, the message you were putting out there. So mm. good job. Thank you. <clears throat> so far. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um, you mentioned you're recording at home and how much of that was recorded right where you're living like all of it oh uh, yeah except for that yeah. track for drumming uh yeah i mean well i mean and chad he he programmed that on his laptop you know in his room so i guess technically all this all this stuff was made here you know because cool. we're all stuck inside for the time being right all right um this is a little different. Obviously, this is a little different for me as well. Uh, th doing a, a second interview like this because I can't. I can't really ask you all the usual things I ask people I haven't interviewed before. Um, so I, I'm going to back up a, a few steps here and say, <clears throat> "How are you? What has been going on with you outside of recording this and you know trying not tr you know going out into the plague lands? <laughs> what are you working on that that is not music right now?" Oh. Uh I've been doing a lot of collage. Uh, I'm, I don't know, I'm sure you've seen that on my social media. Mm -hmm. I shared all the Midnight Disease on Instagram and, and uh, on the Facebook page. So uh, I got back into visual art because collage was something I really liked when I was younger. So uh, I'm doing that and I'm trying to get back into writing uh, just stories because initially, I mean, that's like the first thing I ever wanted to be before I picked up an instrument is just be a writer. And then uh, I love music so much. I started playing guitar and writing songs. It just always felt more natural. It always ended up like, oh, I get an idea for a story, but it just becomes a song because it's, it feels like the most natural way for me to communicate it to people. But gotcha. since, uh, you know, we're in this quarantine, I'm like, hmm, what if, what if I do try to write the great American novel, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of have to be at my desk most of the day, <laughs> but I'm just trying to get back into that. Maybe write some short stories because I kind of want 
I like the midnight disease. I like that uh, moniker to sort of envelop a lot of things, kind of all the things I do. Right. So uh, I was thinking about maybe making some more zines. I have that the zine with the art collective I'm part of, uh, VOAC. Yep. I was going to ask you about that next, actually. Uh, that was yeah. a perfect segue into what's going on with that. Is there another zine coming out? Um, how, is, how has quarantine affected, you know, production of that? Uh, you know, that hasn't affected production too much because we usually communicate. Uh, me and Chad, you know, in roommates, we, we were part of that. And uh, we work on stuff here together. And then usually all, already we communicate through email and, you know, sending art back and forth and working on stuff digitally and right. someone just having to go and print it out <laughs> at some point, you know, like that's something that doesn't really require everyone to be in the room at once anyway. Um, so that's been good. We just put out uh, the first issue for this year. And uh, our theme this year is American magicians. And, oh. uh, so the first one uh, we did actually, and I hold it up. I have the cop- copy of it right here. We did a okay. William Burroughs. <laughs> nice. So that was our theme. We all, uh, and here I did a collage poem. So I utilized a little cut up style. Cut out a bunch of stuff from magazines and made a poem. Uh, a friend of ours wrote an essay on uh, the connection to Scientology, one of our favorite subjects. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, and then the next one, I believe, yes, it is, is going to be Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan. <laughs> yep. Had an uh, interesting conversation with uh, Wyatt about that. Um, uh, you know, he, you know he, he, when, when I interviewed him, he gave me a tarot reading. Oh, did he? Was yeah. It, how was it? From a logistic, from a from a camera logistic standpoint, it was a nightmare. But <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't figured out at that point how to do overhead shots, so it was oh. very, it was yeah, it was it was very much not what I wanted. But um, in terms of the, the reading itself, very interesting. Some some things that gave me some food for thought, and um, um, you can watch it here, wherever the link is. But um, yeah, no, I, I. But he also mentioned Anton. Um, when you said American magicians, I was going to ask, are we talking contemporary or are we talking old school classic ma- magicians or, or uh, a combination? Uh, well, I guess these would all be uh, sort of old school. So, um, but I hope they don't kill me because I don't remember the fourth one we wanted to do. But because uh, <laughs> I know after Anton LaVey, it'll be Marjorie Cameron, who was married to the scientist Jack Parsons. Um, who is partly responsible for getting us to the moon, but he was kind of pushed to the annals of history for a long time because of his association with the occult. And uh, so Marjorie Cameron was a very talented painter, an artist in her own right. So I don't know, magicians tend to be artists and I consider artists magicians because you're using your medium to shift a consciousness in whoever is, you know, taking in said art. Now, it's, um, I'm not sure if this fits with what you're doing just because it's more of a show as opposed to uh, a, pract- a practitioner of magic as opposed to a magician, if you know what I mean, a stage magician. Right. David Blaine seems to lend himself into that type of thing, although he doesn't. Now that I hear what you're talking about, I'm like, no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, screw David Blaine. <laughs> Yeah, David Blaine. I was having a conversation about what's on about David Blaine like the, a few days ago. Yep. David Blaine, because he kind of feels like one of those, like, um, I don't like, know a lot of his stuff, but he's almost more like an illusionist or... Uh, yeah, that's exactly like, what he is. Like someone like um, like Houdini, mm-hmm. who kind of like to call bullshit, <laughs> like a lot of things, you know? Yeah. So I like that. I like that. Um, I, I get the feeling that if David Blaine hadn't made it, he would have become one of those unknown magicians that that tells everybody else how the how the trick's done yeah you know and, or, and that ruins the trick um but i actually like magicians that are say okay here's like something here's something that every magician knows how to do and here's how to do it so you can get into this world and start you know learning more advanced start working on your own stuff mm. um i i enjoy uh, people like chris ramsey i don't know if you're familiar with him he's mm. from canada eh? so yeah, he's canadian um and he puts out some just delicious cinematography on his videos on YouTube. Look him up, Chris Ramsey. 
Uh, he's not just a, a magician, but he's also, um, he solves these puzzles and he even has like $20,000 puzzle boxes that take him a half hour to, to figure out mm. and, and stuff like that. It's really good stuff. Um, plus he's covered in tattoos. So, you know, that's fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, how is uh, anything going on with sounding right now? Uh, yeah, we, so I want to really get back on that. And I think we kind of got in our own way with that. Um, in the what sense that we, <laughs> we moved around our music room downstairs oh. <laughs> and it's kind of like, kind of in one way it's convenient because now it's more of an open space, but it's not in the place where we usually hang out. So it's like very hard to like go over there and do stuff, you know? So I understand. Like, uh, yeah, and I was like, I think we got to move everything back to where it was because there's like this, ki- uh, we have like a kitchen sort of like supposed to be a dining room area, but that dining room area has always just been kind of an art space. Right. And usually like a chat's turntables are down there and like recording stuff and like most of my keyboards and what have you are down there. Mm-hmm. And I think just because well, that's usually the kitchen is where we sit and hang out and drink beer and it's easy to be like, oh man, you want to you wanna mess around? <laughs> you know, you want to do something? I was sort of screwing around, so... I was like, I think we got to get everything back to the central hub of hanging out. Cause it's very hard to position ourselves in the other room. Right. But we but, have like, uh, we have a few things we're working on. I want to do like an EP kind of vocal centric, mm-hmm. not like, I mean, I'm sing on some stuff, but just taking vocals and, you know, manipulating it and chopping it up and making beats out of that, doing sort of that kind of stuff. Yep. Now for those of those viewers that uh, aren't familiar with your sounding project, can you describe that a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Sounding is more of um, it's an industrial, <laughs> yeah, uh, more of an industrial project, experimental, uh, kind of along the lines of uh, coil or um, uh, that's kind of main in- inspiration. Coil, some Sisters of Mercy sounding stuff. I mean, there's some popular stuff, kind of New Order type stuff. I'm a huge fan of electronic music and uh, industrial and that whole world. So to be able right. to exercise that part of my brain is is fun and write songs that i wouldn't usually do with the midnight disease right on um real quick i wanted to touch base on um on actually a question i asked you at the first interview any new favorite venues in town that you're hoping will open back up um wow that's a good question Man, that's a good question. I feel like most of the places I like, um, I don't know. If there was that much new stuff, I didn't get to go to it before it closed down. So exactly. That's, that's that the sad thing. Sucks. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I'm only hoping for the, the stuff I know and love to be back open. <clears throat> I hope all the new things didn't really get a chance, get a better chance or a fighting chance when this, when uh, when it opens back up fully. You know, because sad as it is, this is going to wreck a lot of businesses, music or otherwise. Yeah, and the way things are going, it's going to go a long time. You know, they're projecting years with masks. Yeah, I guess a lot of people were kind of, kind of giving me shit or thought I was being my usual pessimistic self or something but i was like oh two years two years with masks i was telling everyone that mm-hmm. and then everyone's like no 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 and now everyone's like agreeing with me yeah so well. that's why i'm all for this is my thing right now this is how because with the fucking mask argument and i'm kind of impassioned about it because i don't just where it's like the easiest easiest thing you're at, asked to do <laughs> just, exactly so my thing is i like i like fashion i like clothes it's another accessory just yeah, I, I saw your post. Yeah, <laughs> the Elvira, that was nice. Oh yeah, that's actually that's the nicest mask I have. It's so comfortable. <laughs> yep. But uh, uh, I'm just glad that we live in a time where we have this ability to communicate without, you know, being in the same room together, um, and there isn't too much lost in the translation, mm-hmm. except you know, we're not hanging out in my kitchen. Um, but yeah, I, I know what you mean about having to kind of okay, let's get this creative space back to what it's supposed to be as opposed to just kind of hanging out in it that's what you're saying i think was you need to make it more of a purpose-built room right yeah yeah because yeah. you you remember room six yeah this is on one wall on the other wall is in my desk where i would do my editing 
mm. except nope, because my wife works from home now. Ah. <laughs> <clears throat> so I actually do my editing at my day job on my breaks. Okay. Um, yeah, I know my and and so because my my day job, you know, I do I'm in telecommunications. I got other monitors and keyboards and stuff. So I just took the tower and that's where it is. And um, it's it's kind of nice because I'm not getting interrupted, you know, with house with with home family stuff. But at the same time, it's you know, I kind of like. I'm at work, and if something comes up, I can't edit. So I've had to really learn to, like, work ahead. I'm mm -hmm. like I'm right now. I'm a, I'm I'm about a, a week ahead on things I've edited and posted. And uh, my record my record I think was like two months, <laughs> but the problem was things happen things came up I wanted to make videos about, but I had already scheduled videos, and I didn't mm -hmm. want to like clutter things up so um this this is i think a week is about as good as i get but yeah um i miss being able to come in here in room six and know that however i left the room was how it was going to be when i walked back in <laughs> and that's not the case like right. i'm sitting on a piano bench that my wife uses as a secondary little flat surface to put stuff and um the you know this computer is her work computer Mm. So it's got to go back and then get plugged in and get connected to the monitors. My lights got to be moved out of the way and all this other stuff. Uh, you know, first world problems, I know. Yeah. But, <clears throat> but yeah. So I definitely understand that. And um, I'm looking forward to when I can get people back in my kitchen and, and in room six to perform. But um, follow-up question to what I asked you was, what's the first place that you want to play is there, is, do you have a list of things like when I can, uh, this is what I want to do? Um, yeah, I mean, I want to go back. Uh, I want to play that bunkhouse show because they said we could do it when things yeah. come back, you know, that lineup. And all my, I was going to play with a bunch of my friends. It was just like it was going to be a really fun thing, you know, the people I was going to play with. So I kind of want that to be like the kickoff or something. You know, when everything gets gets back to normal, and uh, I don't know, I want to see what's going on with like, like in the arts district, things new things seem to be opening up, or like we're saying, like I don't know, things are kind of being built or in the process of being built, and I don't know, I've seen like, like more breweries are popping up, and I talked to one person for all this happened. I'm like, oh, what what if we did music on the patio or something? You know, because I'm just thinking of the way I've seen that like in other cities and other states. Yeah. So I don't know. Just maybe try to help build build more stuff. You know? Yeah, there's definitely opportunity to kind of um, get in on the ground floor, so to speak, of the rebuild. Mm -hmm. Or when a new a new a place that's like, well, we were already going to, so now we're you know as soon as we can. Um, at time of recording, by the way, f bars have been knocked back to phase one, which means basically they're a lot of them are closing again, um, and because. Yeah. People aren't wearing their damn masks. Tonight, 11.59 p.m. tonight. That's right. So Every, it's... Everyone um, wants to have one last hurrah, so let's all give each other COVID <laughs> for the next few hours. <laughs> Might as well go to a rally in Tulsa. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just so... It's so easy. Anyway. <laughs> um, I have... A weird question for you. All right. Okay. How active? Uh, not a weird question. More of a personal question. Feel free to tell me to go to hell. You don't have to answer it. <laughs> but I know you're doing the zine, the occult. You know, uh, uh, it's the um, VOAC, right? Yeah, Vegas Occult Art Collective. Right. Um, art was the word I was forgetting. <laughs> 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 anti it's an anti-collective um how active are you actually in your day-to-day -day life how how does the occult factor into your process as a musician or just you you know being at home all day um is it something that's more of an interest with you or are you more of a practitioner like Wyatt uh definitely a practitioner okay um you know uh it's referred to as uh, the great work, 
Yes, and I've heard that. Yeah, what that is is kind of trying to, like in the thing I practice, the lema they call uh, getting in touch with your holy guardian angel. It basically, just be seen as another another word for your higher self, or mm-hmm. just getting as deep into your unconscious as possible. You know, peeling back all these sort of sidekick layers and just knowing knowing thyself. So right. yeah, I do all that. You know, I do rituals and I meditate and uh do yoga and breath work and yeah i don't really like kind of i don't really don't separate that from anything else you know it's very intertwined in my my art and in day-to-day life you know i think like someone like um a good example i could use of someone someone who's like that is alan moore the comic book writer Mm -hmm. he's very much like that when he talks about you know magic and what it means to being creative you know, and his writing process. And uh, so that's kind of what got me into it. I started realizing all these, I mean, he has an interest in the occult in this sort of, almost more of a shallow way of just really liking horror movies since I was a kid. Right. And I tend to like those, I tend to like those kind of slow burn, 60s, 70s, witch type movies and things. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I kept coming across stuff. I don't know, was, do you want to get into the whole story? <laughs> Like, I got nothing but time, uh, buddy. All right. Uh, uh, so, um, you know, I don't know. I would just always kind of come across this stuff again and again. And it's always an interest. And then I'd get interested in it and then not. But then something would bring my attention to it again. And then um, <clears throat> it's funny. Actually, I was reading all about Aleister Crowley and uh, the OTO, like the order he was head, head of and things like that. And um, – I had a blog at the time where I would post all my writing and that was where I started just putting on music. This is midnight disease. I would just put songs up every now and then. And I didn't take it too seriously at first, but uh, I had someone email me out of the blue, like, Oh, you know, I really like all your writing and stuff. But I like your lyrics. And uh, I kind of can see some hints at the occult and this and that. He's like, if you're interested, I'm, I'm a member of the OTO. If you ever want to meet people, in the local chapter. Wow. I was like, that's really fucking weird. Cause I've been reading all about that. It's like, you know that's what i've been like immersing myself in so i was like oh maybe it's a sign do i believe in mm-hmm. signs i don't know let me just go meet these people but that's just how it went from there just right got more interested in magic and the occult and met met all these like pretty normal people you know like it's all not like what you think <clears throat> yeah which is good and bad you know it's a little, little more benign than one would hope but yeah, once I started seeing how it was a sort of psychology to help you mm-hmm. with creative things and just knowing yourself and, I don't know, sort of healing back and being a, hopefully being a better person. Yep. Yeah, I went kind of dove full, full, full on in. Hope you don't mind me putting you on the spot like that. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, the reason I asked is that a lot of your posts are about more of that your your post like movie posters from that genre or you know uh uh i uh vintage celebrity icons and and like elvira um yeah. and but but i don't i didn't i haven't seen a lot of posts in that vein of just you talking about it it was always more about the occult genre yeah so, sort of aesthetic yeah, and so I, I, I again, not not to put you on blast. I, I was just wondering how you know is this a, a is this something that you really infuse in your music, or is it more you know? So thank you for answering that. I do appreciate that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and and I think an important thing goes back uh, to something you said is I've known a lot of different types of people in my life. I've made a point of seeking out, or if I come across somebody who expresses something that's different than what I'm is part of my my sphere Mm -hmm. I make a point of at least hearing them out and and finding out some stuff and like you said they're just ordinary people this is what they've decided is what they need to get to where they want to be or uh uh, you know what's going to make sense of their world yes the the world yeah which especially this year (laughs) it needs all the help it can get um and um, I just, I find it very interesting that no matter what culture we're talking about, what country, what, where we are in the world, certain things are the same in different myths and different cultures and uh, different religions. 
And if, if you can open your mind enough to realize that, then you're, you're light years ahead of a lot of, of uh, people. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, one of my favorite things. That's my favorite thing about studying this stuff is like, art, like we're talking about is like archetypes. Like mm-hmm. you can see it, Every, everyone has a version of a, of a story. Like right. We'll right. take a story and you'll find it in every culture. In and yet day. I'm not discounting any one particular sen- a culture or, or sense of beliefs, or, uh, sets of beliefs. Um, I just, it was really eye-opening when, you know, I went away to college and I took mythology, got an A in mm-hmm. it. And the more I learned, I'm like, that sounds really familiar. Hey, that sounds really familiar. Mesopotamia, you say, you know, <laughs> and, and thing that started me down the road of really opening my, my mind and my, my, um, my, my sense of, well, this is the way, this is right. And this is wrong. Or this is, you know, mm-hmm. going to college blew my, my expanded my horizons. That's for sure. Um, cool. Getting back to music <laughs> again, <laughs> I went down rabbit hole. Sorry. Um, just to, again, for anybody who never, who hasn't seen the first interview, what are you waiting for? <laughs> um, how long have you been playing music? Total? Total, I have been playing guitar since I was uh, 13. And you're, yeah, 13. you're 19 thir- now, so. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned 33. Woo! So, 20 yeah, years! I, yeah, just, uh, yeah. I think I made the same joke in the previous interview, but I ain't thinking about it because I always think I should be much better. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. oh my trust, 20 fucking trust years, me. why am I still? <laughs> trust me, I... Oh, I'm always asking myself, what, what did I do with my time? Why, why, how am I only this good? Why am I not better? And I got 15 years on you. And I, <laughs> I started, um, I started seriously when I, when I uh, was 17, when I went, or 18, when I, when I went and moved away to college and I had an acoustic guitar and I didn't have a lot of, I didn't have anything else to do. I, I wasn't very good at making friends. So I, I wrote an album. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I learned first. Yeah. I learned who I was and what I wanted to sound like. But yeah. Um, and you play, you play guitar. Yes. Now, on, on this EP, what instruments are you? Are, did you play? In every, what's all the instrumentation? Uh, so there's uh, uh, rhythm guitar, acoustic, play electric leads, uh, play bass play drums uh there's a little bit of harmonica and there's some synthesizers so you know i should probably you know i think that i should have tried to get really good at one instrument but i can make my way through <laughs> yeah there's six of, i have enough of an ear just you know to find yeah. the find the range we can't like, all be dolly parton in. No, I know. I think, you know what it is? I don't know uh, how you feel, but because when I beat myself up about, like, oh, it's been so long, why am I not, like, you know, a master of virtuoso guitar? Like, why can't I shred? But I would, I think I should have just accepted early on, like, I'm not a shredder. Like, that's not ever going to be me because not yeah. everyone's a shredder, you know what I mean? Just, like, I mean, there are great, there are people that think are great rhythm guitars. I've seen that conversation. I didn't really know it was a thing. Like, people yeah. point out, guitars and bands like that's just a great rhythm guitar just and i'm like yeah i'm good at that i have like a natural thing for rhythm like i can play fast and switch chords fast and like that you know but <laughs> i, I can't play I open and bar <laughs> yeah i just i'm not gonna be in a, in a metal band <laughs> as yeah. much as i would love to <laughs> well you say that but i mean a lot of metal bands they have that guitarist that's just doing power chords most of the oh, time oh yeah you know um and it's one of those you miss it when it's not there kind of thing yeah, yeah. but if they're doing their job right they're not standing out and you know i'm i'm a rhythm guitarist i've tried being the only guitar in a three-piece band and my solos were always very short and exactly what the song needed and nothing more mm. you know i i went for the brian may you know, <laughs> um, school of, of solo writing you know and and not even that good but um any plans once you can what what's your plan for promoting the ep um outside of social media 
like, you know, I guess, is are, are you going to work on a, a little tour? Are you just going to play wherever they let you play in town? Sure, a uh, tour would be ideal, because that's something I haven't, you know, got to do yet. Right. Um, I mean, God, I'm looking forward just to playing in town. Just <laughs> play at a, at a bar downtown will feel like magic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're all... Right. Who knows when that's going to happen again? So uh, that know. first applause is going to be like a wave of just pleasure. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, um, what's, oh, go ahead. Oh, what kind of uh, this like feeling? It kind of sets me back. <laughs> is I was like watching um or reading, like I follow like that info is beautiful thing on Instagram where they do like the really cool looking pretty graphs and stuff, mm -hmm. and it was kind of like doing like a low risk to high risk mm -hmm. of uh, transmission with COVID. Yeah, and, and uh, even in like in each category, it would be like bubbles. So you would, even low risk, you would see a bunch of small bubbles to like bigger bubbles. You know, low risk, but it's a high low risk. Right. In high risk, singing was a pretty high risk within the high risk. And I was like, God damn it! And it was like it makes sense because right. like you mentioned earlier, the bands without masks, you have to project, and, and, and you can't sing with yeah, yeah, you can't sing with a mask. Yeah. Uh, not even like if you had some sort of mic inside your mask that would just be horrible <laughs> yeah you know i i the best i could hope I, the, yeah i mean unless someone invents a mask they have the built-in microphone you know hey hey it's niche market <laughs> <laughs> um okay before we wrap up here i just wanted to ask you one more question um what is one thing you miss more than anything right now that quarantine is keeping you from, from um, having or doing? Uh, travel. Mm -hmm. Travel. I was supposed to go, I was supposed to visit my best friend in Colorado. Uh, one, to see, at the beginning of the year, to see the Mountain Goats, which is our favorite band. So, I hope you die. Yeah. I hope we all die. So uh, that sucked. And then also we were, I was going to go out there again uh, in the summer, this summer, like I think it was a few weeks ago it was supposed to be, like uh, to see the Hold Steady, do their constructive summer thing they always do, their big celebration. So that sucks, being apart from, from people. <laughs> yeah. Um, there must be some places that we, you could make a look, you could go right now that are, that are, that have would let you come and play but the question is is it worth the risk to you i don't think so i don't think so either no because i don't want to be one i don't want to get it and uh two i always think oh what if i'm asymptomatic you know I yeah don't, i don't want to be spitting on everyone when i'm <laughs> what i'm Br seeing bring it home get your roommate sick and the worst is you don't want to you don't want to get it and suffer from it on the road mm. <laughs> having to go to some strange hospital or you know deal yeah. with all that and be away from home you know from your support structure so yeah well brendan thank you very much for coming back on i do appreciate it thank you Brandon. And, um i hope that you'll check, click the link down in the description for his ep the loneliness epidemic and uh maybe it's going to speak to you i personally feel it's, it's speaking to me a little bit even though i do get to i get to go to work <laughs> and i i get to go uh and be essential um i miss I miss hanging out with, with my band and with drummers and, 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 you know, I have a, my drummer is my drum teacher. And I just recently, just uh, about a week ago, went and had a socially distant lesson, but we were in the same place with him. And even that felt like we were flirting with danger because mm -hmm. I was playing his kit, you know, uh. and I brought, I was playing my sticks. I was playing his kit and, um, that's all right because we had whiskey, so that killed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it kills all the all the jokes. But um, yeah, that was as that was as dangerous as I wanted to get. And after that, I'm like, mm. it's kind of like I feel I, I feel like I felt after the bunkhouse where I'm just like, I think I'm gonna set this. I'm not gonna do this again until we get the words. But um, anyway, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you for watching Room Six, and um, if you haven't already, check out the first interview I did with him. He performs in front of this wall some amazing songs and uh, yeah remember to be amazing stay safe stay supportive stay strong you keep on jabbing and uh, thanks for watching room six say bye
Bye. Para pa para pa. This song is called Backwash of Blood, Candy and Cigarettes. It is off the new EP, The Loneliness Epidemic, or rather, An Extermination of Wolves, Songs to Consider While Alone. This happens to be the one song off the EP that I actually wrote entirely during quarantine, so hopefully it speaks to everyone's sense of longing for escape. I woke up. I should have known that the gushing it was not enough It's to show me everything that I had missed It's a bit more difficult when you're living like this And now I'm dreaming of being on my BMX bike Right into Your Old house Where you You rush Outside And you take my hand Lead me to meet All of those Dundee what I deserve and that's fine doesn't know just who I will serve Summer days spent down in Lorenzi Park Mackenzie would meet me there just after dark She would slip me all the things we would ever need High until sunrise on diet cigarettes and sweets You have the right to all that remains Hidden out of sight, buried in my veins And now I'm dreaming of being on my BMX bike Right into Your old house Where you You rush Outside And you take my hand Lead me to meet All of those Dumb demands that's fine, cause I know just what I deserve And that's fine, cause I know just who I will serve It's not me that the world is rooting for It's you crawling down on all fours That will likely rise above I will be left to perish in the breath of our love, our love, and that's fine, doesn't know just what I deserve, and 
that's fine Doesn't know just who I'll serve It's nothing that comes from above It resides deep beneath It's sly but overwhelms all It slowly sinks its teeth I want to thank Brendan for dropping by Room 6. It was a great interview and a great performance. Make sure that you uh, click the link down below to uh, get your copy of The Loneliness Epidemic. It will be dropping July 31st of 2020. And uh, thanks for watching. Really, I do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, you know what to do. If you want to see more videos like this, click up here. Here? I can't remember. In the meantime, remember to be amazing. We'll see you next time. Room 6.